Hey homeschool friends, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's video. So I am going to be taking you through our day, highlighting my third grader. So my third grader, she is eight and a half. And what I'm planning on doing is just taking you through her skills subjects. So the subjects that are individual to her and her learning. She obviously has some other subjects we study. We also study like history, Bible, literature, science. I do have a video on this channel that I put up like three months ago or something like that where I walk you through those subjects, kind of our family subjects for at least my two big kids. And that is mostly Sunlight HBLC as well as Science C. So I will link our day in the life video for that just to give you kind of a well-rounded view of our homeschool. And I also have recently done this type of video for my fourth grader in case you're curious about that. But I feel like these videos are kind of fun. It feels like a bit of a slice of life into our day into my third grader. So let's just hop in to our day. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to the channel or welcome back all of the things. Like I said, I'm taking you through my third graders day. And the first thing I do with just her is language arts. So prior to that, we would have been doing our Bible. We do Bible over breakfast before I get my son started on his math and I start language arts with my daughter, which I will hop into now. So like I was saying, we are using the good and the beautiful level three with my daughter and we are on lesson nine or something like that, so we're not too far. And please excuse any noise in the background because my twins are playing kind of down the hall, but that's normally what they do during this time for her. So I'm going to kind of give you a couple angles of us doing her work, but we're just gonna share how it works for her right now and how she's doing. So kiddo, let's do, the first thing we always do is Timothy and the 10th floor. So let's start with that. So do you remember the sounds of R? Remember last time it was like your brother's name and it's er or doll er? Mm -hmm. And this kind, this time A R says air, like airy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's sound out these words. Ready? Mil. Mil. Military. Military. Okay, and as you can see in this section, we are reading through her reader. It always starts with a little bit of a phonics lesson, which I really do appreciate. And some words that are just a little trickier, they're like challenge words, and she has to read them all through easily one time. So we'll just kind of repeat and repeat until she gets it. I like that these words are kind of on a unit level, so she's seen a number of these by now, and so that really helps her out. You're right here. Chapter nine, Mrs. Sanchez. Good. Zoe held up a box of cat cookies as she and Timothy Mirabel walked back from the bakery late Monday morning on a mission to befriend Mrs. Sanchez. <laughs> and then you can see we're going to start our reading. And the little blue box there is for when she is reading. And then you'll see on the next page it will be a little orange box where I am reading. And I just always follow everything along with my finger to show her where we're at. And I even do that while I am reading because it helps her just kind of see the words and things like that. And I think it's awfully helpful. I do apologize for this angle. I wasn't quite sure how to film it, honestly. So we did this. Now we're going to look at this lesson practice. We're gonna do, I think this is the first literature study. So what we're gonna do is it says that Joanna Spirey was a gifted author from Switzerland. Just over a hundred years ago, she published a book called Heidi. A model is something that's considered an excellent example. So we're gonna read the model passage below from Heidi. We're gonna have you read it aloud. <laughs> the old fern trees were ru rustling, rustling and a mighty wind was roaring. So it's in what we're learning here is sensory language. So that describes the senses, right? What are your five senses? Do you know them? So I'm gonna read it and you describe anything that describes sound. Ready? The old fir trees were rustling and a mighty wind. Wait, I don't hear mighty wind. Rustling is a good word though. But keep listening because you're about to get some more. The old fir trees were rustling and a mighty wind was roaring and howling. called a narration and we're gonna look at the painting while she talks. Ready? And it's called Motif of the Alps. You will read more about this artist in the next lesson. This painting shows a home in the German Alps. Point to the trees that appear the largest in the painting. 
Mm -hmm. Those trees are in the forefront of the painting. Ground. Now for this one, I'm going to read the essay. It's an opinion essay, and you say who it's by. So it's by Tina Parker. So this is her thoughts on what you're going to do, okay? So, so the mountain stood majestically in the backdrop, and the tall grass in front of the lovely home waves gently in the breeze. At first glance, this home may seem like the ideal home, but I'll share reasons why I don't feel this home would be a great place to live. What's important about this is I could have read a totally different opinion where maybe she loved the idea. So that's what opinions are. So there's no right answer for how to do this assignment. What's important as you're starting to do more of these kind of essays and writing, the writing comes from up here. So what you think matters the most, not what you think I would like or what you think the author thinks you should think, but what you actually think. So what we're gonna do here is you're going to write an essay that explains whether or not you agree with this author's point of view. Number one, you're gonna decide in your mind if you agree or disagree with the author's opinion. So this is in response to this author and what she wrote. So on the line with the blue text, you're gonna either write this word or this word. This is how you even spell them. So you would write, I agree with the author or I disagree with the author. So first you have to think about would you like to live here? And then I'll give you a, a second to think about it. And then on this line with the brown writing, you're gonna either write the word would or would not. Like I would like to live in this home or I would not like to live in this home. And then you're gonna say, I'll share two reasons that I feel this way. First, I think da 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 <laughs> period. Second, I also think da 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 period. And then it says on that last line with green text, you're gonna either write overall this is a home for me or overall this is not a home for me. So I love how this program fills it in mostly. It gives you the structure of how to write an opinion essay. And it's just asking you to fill in a couple blanks and to have some unique ideas about this house and what you think. So at this point, as I am letting her kind of start her writing, this is really concluding what we are doing for her good and the beautiful work. At this point, she still has some language arts that's more independent in nature. You can see here, she started with some Abeka reading comprehension, which I do appreciate. I feel like it's a good way for her to test what she is reading specifically. We also are still doing our sunlight readers. In the Good and the Beautiful program, it always says, and have the child read for 20 minutes using the Good and the Beautiful book list. I just use our sunlight readers. I love our sunlight readers. And this is also a time when we use those discussion questions from the sunlight readers. And then she also did do her handwriting. I didn't get a good clip of it, but you can see she finished that right before we transitioned into math. So with Saxon Math, she's doing Saxon Math 3. We do use Nicole the Math Lady, which I'll show you in just a bit, but we also still do the kind of morning meetings. So she was doing her pattern there where she was filling in the numbers. We were also doing money and counting still, and then skip counting. 25, 50, 75, 100. Let's do some skip counting. Can you skip count by threes? Do you remember you do the three, six, nine? Can you count by threes for me first? Actually, here, let's take this. What time is that? It is. 10.05. Good. And a lot of times I'll pick something to really focus on that day. Like for instance, this day we did more work on the clock. Sometimes I just have her tell the time and we move on. But this time we were talking about AM, PM. We were also talking about how far in advance something is and having her work some of that stuff out. And then you can see she went into the Nicole the Math Lady videos. So it always starts with a video prior to her practicing her flashcards, and then going into her worksheet. Now, with the worksheets, there is a side A and a side B. She always does the side A. And then you can see that I was grading her work, and then by the end of it, I would flip it over and there's a side B. And anything that she struggled with, 
I'd have her repeat. So basically I would work with her on the side A and be like, these are what we missed. Let's go through the problem. Let's figure out what's going on. And then I would have her do the side B to practice that again. And I feel like that's just the right amount of work for her because sometimes that allows us to skip the questions that she got right. So she doesn't have to do the entirety of side B if that makes sense. So welcome back. As you can see, I took you through kind of her whole day. I know I sped quite a bit up a bit. It's just like, I didn't think you would really want to watch all of the lessons we did, but you can kind of get an idea of what she is doing, whether it's with me specifically, whether I'm sitting with her teaching her, which is, that's a lot of kind of the good and the beautiful. That is very much teacher intensive, especially for that level three, which again, I am still really liking for her. This was not a day we did spelling. Spelling's kind of every other day. Although at this point, currently, as of today, I've started to do spelling more every day to just bring it into those days, even if it doesn't have kind of a spelling lesson, just because she needs the practice and she forgets it more often than not. And so, yes, the good and the beautiful needs me a little bit more. And then she can transition into some of those independent subjects like I showed you, her Rebecca reading comprehension, or maybe even logic or typing or handwriting, which she does actually do handwriting every day. I just didn't get a clip of her doing that before she goes into her math. And honestly, the math doesn't happen right after language arts. So I feel like that's important because this video didn't really depict that very well. I was only showing you my third grader. So after she does her language arts and her independent language arts, she gets a bit of a break and it could be a break where she can go play or it just depends on how long it takes her. If it takes her a longer amount of time, she'll butt into kind of our snack time, which is when I do a majority of the reading for sunlight. So we'll do our history or science or read aloud, things like that. And so she'll have kind of a mental break and then she'll go into her math. And then you can see that when it comes to math, I'm a little bit less involved, but still quite involved, to be honest. We still, in doing those meeting minutes, that takes a while for us to kind of go through all the things. She does learn via video, but then I'm the one correcting and doing the problems with her because she's only eight and a half and that's very much appropriate and that's what she needs of me at this stage. So that is really my third grader. That is kind of what she does throughout the day. And all in all, I'm just really liking where we're at going into this second semester. So I wanted to kind of highlight it. I wanted to highlight how things were going. And I hope this was helpful, especially if you're curious about kind of a third grader, how much do they do, things like that. You're just kind of gathering and researching information. I hope this video was helpful. Otherwise, you guys, let me know if you like the video by giving it a thumbs up, subscribing to the channel, all of the things, and I will see you guys in the next homeschool video. All right, take care.